Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Community United Methodist. I am happy to be here with each and every one of you. In a few minutes, Pastor Robert is going to lead us in congregational prayer. So if you have a prayer request that you want to share with the congregation, or maybe it's private, it's just for Pastor Robert. Either way, go ahead and pull out that prayer request card that's in the seat back in front of you. You can fill it out and send it to the center aisle. It'll be picked up right before our prayer time. Or you can text Pastor Robert to the phone number that's on the front of your bulletin. Also, if you are closest to the wall on either side of the sanctuary, we have our friendship pad in the pew. Members and visitors alike, we would just love for you to sign that and send it down the aisle. And yes, Vacation Bible School starts tomorrow, if you can't tell. And we got a jump start on our decorating. So we have about, oh, I think 82 kids showing up tomorrow. So we are going to have a full house of kids and joy and laughter and excitement and fun. And if you have I don't know, five minutes after church to help me move some heavy things. I would be so grateful if you wanted to just come up here for just a minute after worship to help me move a couple things. I would be so, so grateful. So we are going to jump right into our worship time. Our musicians are going to lead us in our first two songs. So would you please stand? Would you join them in singing as we begin? Salt for the earth, O oh people, salt for the kingdom of God. Share the flavor of life, O oh people, life in the kingdom of God. Bring forth the kingdom of mercy, bring forth the kingdom of peace, bring forth the kingdom of justice, bring forth the city of God. kingdom of God. Bring forth the kingdom of mercy. Bring forth the kingdom of peace. Bring forth the kingdom of justice. Bring forth the city of God. You are a seed of the word, O oh people. Bring forth the kingdom of kingdom of God. Bring forth the kingdom of mercy. Bring forth the kingdom of peace. Bring forth the kingdom of justice. Bring forth the city of God. We are a blessed and a pilgrim people. takes a spark to get a fire going and soon all those around can warm up in its glowing that's how it is with God's love once you've experienced it you spread his love to everyone you want to pass it on. What a wondrous time is spring when all the trees are budding. The birds begin to sing, the flowers start their 
It's fresh like spring. You want to pass it on. I wish for you, my friend, this happiness that I found. You can depend on him. It matters not where you're bound. I'll shout it from the Come to me, I want to pass it on. Join with me in the call to worship. I am like the green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the steadfast love of God forever and ever. I will thank you forever because of what you have done. In the presence of the faithful, I will proclaim your name for it is good. Amen. The opening prayer. Uh, let's adopt a spirit of prayer. God of all people in all times and all places, we thank you for the opportunities that we have to step outside of our own lives and learn how others live. We thank you for the opportunity to serve one another as instruments of your peace and love. We trust that your kingdom will come and we rejoice that you let us be a part of its creation. Amen. You may be seated, and as you're seated, kids, come on up and join me in singing our kids' song. This, this is where children belong. Welcome to this part of our worshiping throng. Water God's word, bread, and cup prayer and song. This is where children belong. Morning, friends. Try and experiment with me. Okay, so here's what you gotta do. You're gonna try this little challenge. You gotta take a really deep breath in and wow. Wow. <laughs> wow, you're holding your breath. After you take that really deep breath, you're holding your breath. I want you to try to breathe in even more. Okay, ready? Hold your breath. Now try to breathe in all, a bunch more. <laughs> Can you do it? Can you do it? You, you can. Okay, let me see. Okay. You got to take a little. You got to take a really deep. You got to take a deep breath. Hold it and then take another deep breath without letting go of the first air. You can't let go of the first air. Yeah. You have to. You have to let go. You have to let go of the first breath to get another breath. Is that correct? I can't do it. Okay, ready? I can't do it. <laughs> okay, grown-ups, can you do it? Is anyone, anyone you, I know you all want to try, because you, you saw me try it. Who, who said they can do it? Who said they could? Huh? Oh, Chris. Hmm. Who thinks Chris can really do it? <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. If you can. <laughs> it looks painful, but you really do. You have to let go of that first breath to get a whole nother breath. And we're letting go of something like you have to let go of that that something we need before we can actually receive the new thing right you have to let go of that that breath to receive something new and so it reminds us a little bit of our scripture story today because in our scripture story today there's a, a man he's a very rich and wealthy man and he says um he wants to know how can he receive what god is offering and what is god offering he's offering a life of forgiveness healing love, joy. He's offering all these beautiful, wonderful things. And Jesus says to him, you gotta get rid of the one thing. And he has to get rid of the one thing that 
he loved the most or feels most comfortable, and that's his money. And he has to let go of that thing before he can receive the new thing. And the guy says, well, that sounds really hard. <laughs> and he doesn't do it. He actually can't do it. And for him, it was money. But we all have something in our life that we're trying to hold on to. Maybe it's not money. Maybe it's control. Maybe it's a friendship that you don't want to get rid of. Um, for maybe our mission trip workers, maybe it was sleeping in a comfortable bed. <laughs> maybe it was, you know, doing something that was out of their, something that they were comfortable with. Some of, is anyone a first timer of the mission trip? Some, some first timers? And so maybe for them it was a little bit of a fear, like maybe it was letting go of peace. We all have something we gotta let go of. And so this man, he couldn't let go of his money. And the disciples were like, Jesus, like that was like, how are you expecting him to do that? And Jesus replied, he, his response was, for God, all things are possible. So what he's saying is, you don't have to do it alone. When I ask, when, when God asks us to give up something to receive a blessing, he's saying, you don't have to do it on your own. I'm going to be there with you. I'm going to help you through. I'm going to work with you. You're not alone. I can do this stuff with you. I'm never expecting you to do things alone that are scary and hard. I can do it with you. And together, with God's help, all things are possible. And God can make it possible. If you let go of that thing, let go of that air or that whatever it is, to receive a new fresh breath of air. God's fresh breath of air is love and peace and healing and joy and all these beautiful, wonderful things, but we got to let go of the one thing that is holding us back. We're going to run upstairs. Not run. I hear it was wrong there. We're going to walk upstairs. Okay, are you guys ready? Okay, they're going to keep going down here, but we're walking upstairs. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear the joy, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our first scripture comes from Isaiah 41, verses 17 through 20. When the poor and needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue is parched with thirst, I, the Lord, will answer them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open the rivers on the bare heights and the fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land spring, springs of water. I will put in the wilderness the cedar, the acacia, the myrtle, and the olive. I will set in the desert the cypress, the plain, and the pine together so that all may see and know, all may consider and understand the hand of the Lord has done this. The Holy One of Israel has created it. Our second scripture is from Matthew 19, verses 16 through 24. Then someone came to him and said, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? And he said to them, Why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. He said to him, which ones? And Jesus said, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and mother. Also, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, I have kept all these. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, if you wish to be perfect, go, sell your possessions and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When the young man heard this word, he went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I tell you, it will be hard, it will be hard for a rich person to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Again I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter into the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. God of grace. 
grace and God of glory on thy people pour thy power crown thine ancient church's story bring her but to glorious flower grant us wisdom grant us resignation to the evils we deplore. Let us search for thy salvation, be our glory evermore. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this heart, for the facing of this heart. You may be seated. Our third scripture lesson this morning comes from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. And be kind to, another, to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Author of life, we thank you for your word. And we ask that your spirit would be with us this morning to transform us in heart and mind and soul. Amen. Now this is the part of the service where normally you would hear a sermon from me explaining a little bit about the verse that we just heard. But one, you already heard my thoughts on this verse when we commissioned our ASP team. And two, two, we proclaim the word, the good news of God through both our speech and our actions. And that's exactly what our ASP team did as they went forth to Appalachia to help build kindness in the world. So I'm gonna invite Nick and Paula to come on up and they are gonna share with you um, about what they've been doing down there in Appalachia. will probably make it easier to hear me on the recording. So I'll say again, I present myself as a, a little bit untraditional format for standing at the front of the church, but this is the way people saw me every day as we're out on the site working with people. And that has been every year. It's, it's a life-changing experience. Tell me, I want to tell you first a little bit about ASP, Appalachia Service Project. Objective is making homes warmer, safer, and drier. We do this through a relationship ministry, and there's really an emphasis there on the relationship. I'm an engineer, so naturally I brought along stats today. Ten girls, eight boys, ages 13 through 18. Nine adults and ten rookies. Prince of Peace, Blake's Church, the Wesleyan United Methodist Church, and those attending here at Community, as well as those not attending a church. 
we came together this week as a group. Everybody started with this vision of I'm going to go and work on homes as part of this Appalachia service project and make them warmer, safer, drier. What I find each week as we go and we prepare in the months in advance is some people want to go and do exactly that. I want to work on homes. Some people want to be there to mentor kids. Some people are looking to offer blessings to, to others, to homes there, and working on eradicating poverty in that region. And some are looking for an opportunity to be touched by the light of God. By the end of the week, the reality is all of us find all of those things. For me personally, I start out the week every year. I got this cool green fan this year, which signified that uh, I was the, the coordinator. So naturally, by about Sunday and all of my preparation of travel, I am exhausted and I'm stressed and I'm not sure what to do with the week. But we start with Saturday night. We have a number of things. One, we have to talk about the rules of the week and the expectations. But then I have a friend stand up, Tom, and he reminds us, why are we here? We're creating disciples. All these churches from this area, our community, we're going down and we are working on discipleship, not only for ourselves, but through the communities that we work in. By Wednesday, I've heard other people talk about the gifts, the gifts that we each bring as individuals and reminded that while I may not be good at some things, I might not be the best at speech, I might not be the best in construction, I have my own gifts. We all have our gifts to share and we're reminded. And those God-given gifts are there to be shared with the world. On Friday, we hear, we hear more words, words that represented how our weeks, how our week affected us. So I wanted to share some of those that I heard. Mine was rush. Mine was a balance between the rush and the excitement of working in homes, but making sure I don't get so rushed that I'm missing this. And I really see that by the end of the week that I have been all those things. I've led disciples, but I'm reminded how I am a disciple of Christ. God, or I should say dog. We've had two dogs roaming around. You'll probably see some photos of them around the, the center. But at moments when we're feeling highs or sometimes when we're feeling lows, sometimes all it takes is a dog greeting us to remind us that God is there to support us. And I heard the word one. When we talk about the power of one, I think a lot of times we think about our own individual power. But if, uh, if you see Kevin today, shake his hand and thank him. Power of one is we came out as one community. We acted as one team. We came together on one mission. And we achieved all of those things. With that, I want to take a moment. I want to ask uh, Westwood and community stand up, all the team members who participated. I want to thank all of you for being there, taking time from your lives and, and making this happen. So here is about a th I was going to say about a third of our, a third of our group there. <laughs> And so many communities coming, so many members coming from Wesleyan, yeah, from Westwood Church. Thank you. <laughs> so, I really wasn't intending, and you guys can be seated. It's no intent to exclude out of my numbers, but my stats didn't include Westwood Methodist Church. Uh, recognize that community has been participating since 2011 and preparing. So with one exception of a year that no one could really do anything during that summer, uh, we have been, been going for those many years. And all of that has come from uh, the gifts that uh, Westwood has brought us, starting with uh, Mr. Doug Wood. So I want to give a moment for 
uh, invite Paula to speak and talk about our relationship with Westwood. This is how it's been ever since community came. Oh, <laughs> oh Nick, okay, okay, sorry. Anyway, it, it has been 13 wonderful years serving, being the hands and feet of Christ. We started out as separate teams when we were at a center for the week with ASP. They would have a work site, we would have a work site. They would have a work site, we would have a work site. Then there were double crews, Westwood community, Westwood community. And it was God's plan, I believe in my heart of hearts, I've been going since 1986, and I believe it was God's plan that pretty soon because we love each other, because we work for the same purpose, because we serve the same God, that we would be like fingers linked together, holding, sharing strengths and weaknesses for three years. Westwood and community have shared work crews. We learn together, we fly together, we fail together, we come back together. And I think next year will be our fourth year as community. In two years, it will be Westwood United Methodist Church's 50th year participating with ASP. Our goal, our membership has ebbed and flowed. Our goal would be to bring 50. I don't know how many of them will be youth, but that's a nice round number, don't you think? And a nice thing to pray for and pull about. But really, we were so blessed for so many years with Doug Wood, who remains the man behind the curtain in the back. I know I can see his head and his headphones. We were blessed, and it was Doug who approached my husband and I, not once, not twice, not even three times. It took four invitations. You really need to give this a try. And I'll tell you folks, we were hooked. I personally was very sad when Doug moved his family up north. But look at the family he has become a part of. And he has brought his faith in his God and his belief in this ministry, working in the heat and the poverty and the mountains of a beautiful part of the United States. And it is truly a service-focused ministry, building relationships, construction on the side. And I think you guys are not done. OK. Thank you for letting me share. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> well, I'm going to leave it. There's many more testimonials, and I'm excited we will see that as we go through the. Oh, go ahead. Be kind to each other, tender hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. What was your project this week? What uh, did you work on? So we made a floor and we, so we put joists and then insulation and subfloor, so like electrical. And then we put like the flooring and then we're just finishing on the two ends. And are you proud of how it looks? Yeah. Does it look awesome? Yeah. What, would, what did it look like when we first got here? Dirt. It was dirt. We were, the floor, we were standing nothing. in dirt. And now we have a floor to stand on that looks really nice. Yeah. What was your favorite part about the week? Do you have one? No. I think you have one. What? The chickens. Oh, yeah. Chickens? The chickens. We're chasing baby chickens right now. Somewhere there's baby chickens. 
that was a pretty fun part of this week, right? Yeah. And making friends and learning new cool things. Yeah. All right. High five for rocking it out. Awesome job, rookie. Hey, Taylin. So this is your first year on ASP. You are a rookie. You jumped in kind of late, so we had to fill you in quick last minute. So now that it's Thursday, now that you've had you know most of the week under your belt, overall, how would you say this week has gone for you? Good, and I'll do ASP next year. Yeah, you, your first week, and you're happy to come back. Awesome. We love to hear that. How was your week? It was so good. Did you absolutely love ASP? Yes, day one I was hooked and said I was coming back. And um, what was your favorite part this week? Um, oh my goodness, power tools. Power tools? <laughs> power tools. <laughs> <laughs> also the animals. I caught so many kittens and chased after many baby chickens and got attacked by chicken mamas. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> what, um, what are you taking away from this week? Um, that we're not here to help people, but we're here to serve. And I like that I'm not only doing things that I love by using my hands, but I'm also serving and doing it in the Lord's name. That's awesome. Go ASP! Go ASP! <laughs> hey Dexter, you are a rookie as well. This is your first week on ASP. Um, so what was your favorite part about our project this year? Uh, drilling the floor and the joist. Into the joist? You like the drill? So your team drill and screws over team hammer and nails then. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yesterday was our demo day, so we pretty much removed lots of things in the bathroom, pretty much everything. We're left with stud walls and a dirt floor. And so we're pretty much starting from scratch. We ran into some obstacles along the way, but today's the day that we're really gonna start building up. So I'm quite excited. It's great to be back after a gap year. Um, I just wanna say, the one word that I would take away from this is perseverance. Just keep going and good things will happen. I think this trip is like the most fun thing ever. It's like the road trip and then building, helping people is just a lot of fun. So. Day one was really good. We got a lot done. Uh, what's, what's the project today? We're putting siding up on a wall. I think the first day went really well. We got a lot of work done. We lift up a shout of praise. What would you tell your friends about doing ASP? Hmm. I don't know. It's a great way to uh, serve and, I don't know, grow closer to God. And, uh, I don't know, kind of humbles you in a way to uh, help other people. Um, and give away your time like that. I've really been loving it these past few days. I wasn't so sure about how I was gonna like it when I first came, but it really has like changed my perspective on a lot of things for sure. And it's, I think it's definitely helped me grow as a person. And I, I really am looking forward to um, finishing up these next few days. And yeah, I just, I love all of the animals too. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. Do these have names? Um. Yeah, but I forgot. <laughs> I just like to hold them. They're so cute. They are yeah. cute. But I've really been loving it, so. <laughs> Super. So the homeowner is one of 11 siblings. Wow. Um, when two of the other brothers are here. Um, so between all of them, they've told us about um, their mom, who would, they said they, their mom would love to have us here and would be making us pies and things like that. Um, and they said their dad built that porch swing. Um, and so, yeah, there's just a lot of memories in this house. And so I'm really glad that we get to work on it and make it safer for them. It's an experience that has lived up to its reputation so far. I really, really am having a good time. Um, I think Gary might be tired of me. We rode here all the way together in the same car. <laughs> But it's been a good experience so far. And I, the reason I decided to come this year was just because I thought uh, I've been retired for a couple years and it's time for me to do something a little bit different outside my comfort zone. Well, I've been doing a little bit more of that along the way, but this is way outside my comfort zone so far. Uh, but so far I like being outside my comfort zone. 
it's a nice neighborhood to live in. So that's where I'm at right now. Paula and I have been coming to uh, the hills of Kentucky, West Virginia, Tennessee, and North Carolina now for a number of years. And I've always been impressed with the kindness of the people, the dedication to their family and, and their God. It's always a pleasure for me to, to come here and serve and walk hand in hand with these people, even if it's just for a week. It's also a great way, if you're looking for a challenge, to uh, challenge yourself physically, mentally, and um, skill-wise. So I would encourage anyone that is even thinking remotely of joining us at the Appalachia Service Project to do so, to do so this coming year. Don't wait. Join us, please. broken my windows are open wanna feel the wind blow through my hair which way do i follow what happens tomorrow i turn to you and hope you can guide the way sometimes i give up just wanna be on my own even in the darkest time
little hard to maintain your composure after watching these videos because you just spend the week there. So I want to give a thanks to, uh, give me a moment here, a thanks to C.J. Bennett, who's here, who put together this beautiful video. And really, uh, I couldn't sit here and talk for four hours and you know explain all the wonderful things that uh, have happened during that meet, both the way we've served others and the way we've been served. So as we close out this, uh, not so much sermon today, but the experience of ASP, I want to close with a thank you to the community. It takes a lot uh, going to this. Of course, there's a major financial impact, but also preparations, fundraising, things like the yard sale, things like the fact that we are sent down with tons of snack foods that uh, give us that little boost of carbohydrates and sugar throughout the week as we need it. But just the ongoing support uh, from the community to our youth group. And as that community is both within the church and as out of the church, uh, I greatly, greatly appreciate that. So I'm going to close here and just close with a, a thank you to all of you. Thank you, Nick, and thank you to all of, all of you that participated in ASP. Um, I'm going to invite all of you to stand once again as you're able so that we can affirm our faith in the God who sends us out into the world to do good things. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. When well, we take time each week to be in prayer for one another, and so as I invite you to send your prayer requests forward this morning. I also want to remind you that we have candles at the back of the sanctuary so that uh, if you have a prayer that's on your heart, but you maybe don't have the words to speak it or you're not ready to share it out loud yet, you can go and light that candle to give body to your prayer. And I also am going to invite us to a moment of silent prayer. So please join me. about that interruption. Almighty God, we thank you for every opportunity that we have to be in service to the world. With our actions, we proclaim the good news of your kingdom as we build a more kind and just world. 
As the Olympic Games get underway once again, we rejoice at seeing a glimpse of your kingdom come as people of all tongues and nations gather together to engage in play. As we lift all those who are gathered up in prayer, we also ask your blessing on all those who will gather here in the coming days to play, learn, and worship during our vacation Bible school. And Lord, as we pray for our gathered community, we lift up those who are in special need of your love. We join together in prayer with the Bartmans as they experience a lot of change in their life. We lift up new opportunities and pray that their construction on their home goes well. We join with Barb in praying for her grandson who has an appointment with a specialist on August 8th to try and figure out the right surgery to correct his back. We join with Bobby in praying for her daughter Brooke who's sick with COVID and not doing very well. And Lord, we join our hearts with those who are grieving. We join with Mark as he expresses his love and thanksgiving for all of the prayers and the messages that he has received and the passing of his mother. And we join our hearts with Shelby and her family as they grieve the loss of her mother yesterday. And Lord, as we unite our hearts with those who grieve, we are reminded that our grief in this world is not the end of things. We're reminded that there is new life through you, through the resurrection. And so we celebrate every instance of new life. And this morning I lift up my friends Brian and Bree on the birth of their son Oliver. Lord, we offer up all of these prayers before you today, knowing that in our moments of sorrow, in our moments of joy, you are always there with us. And so it is that no matter where we find ourselves in life, we are able to give thanks to you in all times and in all places. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, before we move to the table this morning, I have a few announcements that I want to make you aware of. Uh, as Wendy already mentioned in welcoming you today, our VBS starts tomorrow, and it seems we've got a little fixing up of our decorations to do yet, but uh, very thankful to all of you who have offered your time to help with that. Uh, and I also want to take a moment to offer our thanks to Pine Street Mercantile, who is letting us borrow some of the decorations that you see up here um, to help us make a more immersive experience for our kids. Uh, the next thing that I want to remind you of is that there is a quarterly gathering of the Muskegon Methodist Ministries this Wednesday from 6 to 8 at Lake Harbor. Uh, we are going to be hearing from some folks about uh, the issues facing uh, the unhoused in our community. So if you're interested in that or if you have any questions about that, um, feel free to ask me um, about that. But otherwise, 6 to 8 Lake Harbor Wednesday. Uh, the next thing that I want to remind you of is that the Northside Summer Spectacular is coming up quick. It's not this Thursday, but next is with the parade. And we are doing a lot this year for the parade. We've been stepping up our presence a little bit each year, and we are doing more this year than we have done in the last couple years. So that means we need a lot of help to make all of that happen. So on the back side of your announcements in your insert in the bulletin, 
there is a QR code there. So those of you that are tech savvy, you can pull out your smartphone and scan this QR code. It'll take you to uh, Sign Up Genius where you can mark down that you're gonna help with this. If you're maybe a little bit technically challenged, don't worry, there is a physical sign up sheet in the lobby. I saw uh, Barb already signed up out there, so thank you, Barb. Uh, plenty of spaces to fill, 28 spaces in total um, between the parade, walking in the parade, and uh, selling uh, food to folks, helping with ice cream. Um, there's just all kinds of stuff for you to help out with this year, um, and it only happens because of all of you. So um, take a moment, see if there's a way that you can help. Um, we're not all able to take a week to go down to Appalachia, but we can take a couple hours out of our day to help uh, make people more aware of God's mission here in North Muskegon. Um, let's see, what's next? Uh, the last thing that I want to make you aware of is you will see an announcement again in your bulletin for what we're calling Prayer Pals. Uh, I want to thank Diane for inspiring this at one of our picnics, which happen every Sunday at 6 at Snug Harbor. But at one of our picnics, uh, Diane mentioned uh, something that had been done in the past where uh, folks were paired up with kids in the congregation to pray for them. And I went, that's a good idea. I'm going to steal that and we're going to do it again. Um, so we are going to be inviting you to sign up to uh, be in prayer for the young folks in our congregation for the next school year. Uh, we're getting the information from them, and we're going to, I think next week is when we're going to start having a sign-up sheet for that um, so that we can get to know folks across the generations in our community a little bit better and let the young folks here know that they are loved and cared for and supported. Um, so be on the lookout for more information about that. Like I said, I think next week is when we're going to have the sign-up sheet. Um, to get you started on that. Um, there are more announcements in your bulletin, so when you have a chance, take a look at those, but that's everything that I wanna make sure is on your radar today. Um, and so while Kevin and uh, Kathy tend to our decorations here, the rest of us can go ahead and move to the tables. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And now having set ourselves at peace with God, we will stand and exchange signs of peace with those around us. As we begin to make our way back to our seats, I'm going to go ahead and invite our ushers to come forward this morning so that as forgiven and reconciled people, we might offer ourselves and our gifts to God. And you may be seated.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gifts that you give us. And as we return these gifts to you this morning, we ask that your blessing would be upon them so that we might continue to go into the world to raise up disciples and to transform the world in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. You may be seated. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of one loaf. 
the bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. In the United Methodist Church, we practice open communion, so what that means is that all people are welcome to come and receive God's grace through the sacrament. You don't have to be a member of our church or even of our denomination. As part of our commitment to being an open table, we use the language of wine liturgically, but we use grape juice practically. And if uh, here at Community United Methodist Church, we practice communion by what's called impinction. So you'll receive a piece of bread that you will dip into the chalice. If you're uncomfortable with that practice or you have a health reason to avoid that practice, we do have a few small cups of grapes grape juice available as well. Or if you're in need of gluten-free elements, we have those too. So just let your server know if you need either of those accommodations. Uh, the other thing to know is that if you are unable to come forward to receive the sacrament, we will make sure that the sacrament comes to you. And here at Community United Methodist Church, we also practice communion every week as part of our commitment to an open table so that whether you're here with us every week or whether you're here with us just today, we can all gather at the table together. Uh, I believe that's everything that I need to let you know in terms of instruction. So would our servers for this morning please come forward. prepared, all are welcome.
eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now I'm going to invite you to stand one last time as you're able so that we can sing our closing hymn, Sent Out in Jesus' Name. Robert, I'm going to take the microphone for a second. Doug, would you stand up, please, in the booth so everybody can see him? I'm not going to have this chance again, probably, but more than 40 years ago, Doug and I were a young family with two kids, and we did not have a church home. Our children were like four and one, and we did not have a church home. And Paula, whom you've met up here from Westwood, was the librarian at Doug's school. And Paula said, I think you should come and visit our church. I think you should bring your family. That very same week, we're talking about mid-1980s, a colleague of mine at Western Michigan University said, Kim, I think you and Doug should bring your young family to Westwood and visit our church. And we figured God had something to say to us, so we visited and set our family on the path. And I just want to thank Paula, and I want everybody to know, ask somebody to come to church. You don't know, but it has changed the entire trajectory of our lives and our family's lives and I just can't thank Paula enough. Sent out in Jesus' name, our hearts are ready now to make the earth a place in which the kingdom comes. Sent out in Jesus' name, our hearts are ready now to make the earth a place in which the kingdom comes. The angels cannot change a world of hurt and pain into a world of love of justice and of peace the task is ours to do to set us really free oh help us to obey and carry out your will sent out in jesus name our hearts are ready now to make the earth a place in which the kingdom comes Sent out in Jesus' name, our hands are ready now to make the earth the place in which the kingdom comes. The angels cannot change a world of hurt and pain into a world of love, of justice and of peace. The task is ours to do, to set it really free. Oh, help us to obey and carry out your will. Sent out in Jesus' name, our hands are ready now to make the earth the place in which the kingdom comes. Sent out in Jesus' name, our hands are ready now to make the earth the place in which the kingdom comes. The angels cannot change the world of hurt and pain into a world of love, of justice and of peace. The task is ours to do, to set it really free. Oh, help us to obey and carry out your will. Amen. And now, my siblings in Christ, may you be sent out into the world to do the task that is set before us and to help God in the building of the kingdom. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.